Maleficent. Was she one of your favourite characters uh, when you were growing up? So she's the, the baddie, really, in Sleeping Beauty, isn't she? Yes, she's the baddie. And when I was little, I, I, did, I did like her. I liked her uh, more than I liked Sleeping Beauty. I thought Sleeping Beauty was... Uh, the, in that version, in the 50s, right. she was a very uh, 1950s princess, I think, waiting for her Prince Charming to, to save her. And I thought Maleficent was just so elegant and powerful and, uh, you know, deliciously wicked. I shall bestow a gift on the child. Before the sun sets on her 16th birthday, she will fall into a sleep like death! It's a fantastic movie. Uh, you look stunning in it and quite scary. Um, and that's one of the reasons that Vivian stars in it, your daughter. She's in um, about two scenes, and they're really cute little scenes, but I'm a mom. Um, but she, it wasn't uh, because I wanted her in a film, it was out of necessity, because after I've cursed the, the child, uh, we run into each other, and she is so um, full of love and light that she doesn't see how people normally see me. She doesn't see a demon or a villain or something ugly and evil. So other little kids, they saw me in my, my uh, costume, and they cried. So, um, so I had to uh, cast the only child I knew who was five years old, little girl who wouldn't cry, um, oh. which was Viv. Your humanitarian work is well known. You're very dedicated to that. It started back with Lara Croft, didn't it, in Cambodia? Is that where it first sort of started? It, it first. For you? I think it was the first time when I was in Cambodia. It was the first time I realized. I think we all have that moment in our lives where we kind of really question how much we know and our education and what we've been told. Mm -hmm. And we realize that we have to do our own digging and our own research and find out what the truth is really for us. And at the time, there was a lot of violence happening in Sierra Leone. And, and um, so I did a lot of research. And then I asked to, to go to Sierra Leone. And I went. And it was the first time I was in that kind of a situation. My whole life changed. I realized how uh, sheltered I'd been and how fortunate I was and how um, and I felt horrible for ever having been self-destructive or self-pitying because in comparison to what people really go through, I'm so blessed and I, and I just felt uh, a responsibility to be a better person. Lots of people will want to know how you are health-wise. They'll, you know, they'll be concerned about you. Are you well? Yes, that's very nice that, that they would be concerned. I'm doing ve I'm very, very well. I, um, I feel very happy that I made the choice I made and, yeah. and I'm... Uh, and, and I will um, follow up with the, the other surgery at some point um, because my mother had breast and ovarian cancer. Yeah. Um, and I'm very happy to have started, um, you know, my life now is, is very much having, I, I meet so many women, we talk about these issues. And, and you've and, changed, I mean, you know, so many people um, have done what must be a tough decision because of what you've done as well. How, does that feel a weight on your shoulders, shoulders to have inspired that or not? Or is that I'm so I, I received a letter the other day from a woman who said that she got checked and found out that she had it and she'd already been through the surgery and she's home and she's happy and she's with her kids. And if just for that letter or just for that one, it's that's, you know, oh. very moving to me. Actually, that's lovely. It's been an absolute pleasure meeting you. Thank you very much indeed for talking to Thank us. Thank you.